Hi everyone, it's Elise from Kid and Clatter Coloring Classes and welcome to my Coloring Tip Tuesday. Short videos to answer popular questions you've been asking about your coloring. I've seen a few people struggling lately with how to use and resize digital stamps, so I thought I'd make a quick video tutorial on how I do this using Microsoft Word. Digital stamps are great because you can make the size whatever you want to suit any project, and they're usually a lot cheaper than our rubber stamps. And you also have the ability to easily merge images together to start creating scenes or your own backgrounds. So this is a really quick procedure to do. So even if you don't have a lot of computer skills or experience, this shouldn't be too hard. And if you have found it hard in the past, hopefully this helps to simplify it for you. Now, if you are using an Apple computer or device, you'll be using Pages, which is a very similar program to what I'm using here, but some of the controls might be in different places. I actually have a step-by-step -step picture tutorial for both Word and Pages available on our website at kiddingclatter.com. Select Coloring FAQs and then scroll down to resi Resizing Stamps. So this may help if you're having trouble finding where particular buttons are. It's just all print screen, so it's uh, all got the pictures and everything, so it should be easy to follow as well. But I know watching the video can make a little bit easier process for you. So I'm hoping this is going to take out some of the guesswork for you today. Now, if you don't have either of these programs, you can use OpenOffice. Now, that's a free word processing program you can download. You can just go to Google and search OpenOffice free download. It's a very, very similar and very easy to use as well. Now, the reason why I usually recommend using Word or Pages rather than just printing directly from your download folder or your computer is that you have the ability to set up the entire page with multiple images for printing. So this will get you the maximum use out of your paper so that there's no wastage and you can set up multiple projects at once. If you're in our classes, and our monthly classes in particular being a 5 by 7 inch size, you can actually fit two of your class projects side by side. That's really great to do because then you get two copies to experiment and practice on, which can take away a lot of the pressure for getting things perfect the first time around because you've got those extra copies to really practice and play with. Now, I've actually um, created some free images for you here today that you'll be getting. If you pop down to the video description below, you'll find the link to them, or it's just at kiddingcloud.com slash resizing stamps. That way you can have a little bit of a play with digital images if you don't have any in your stash. Now, when you go to that page, it will take you to this screen here and you'll see at the top here, it says click below to download and you've got the images. This is the way that I set up all of our free stamps. So if you're in our Facebook group, every week we do freebies and giveaways for you from all different craft companies. This is how easy it is to use. You come to this page, it says click below to download and you can just click each file that's there and it will just download that straight to your computer. Now, um, it will usually default to go to your downloads folder on the computer unless you've specified otherwise. But if you ever have questions about that and you're having trouble navigating, please feel free to ask. I'm always happy to help with any technical questions because once you're shown once, it's super easy and you just know for next time. Now, on some devices, clicking these may not do anything. Uh, if you've got extra security set up or some firewalls, it may... Uh, the buttons may not be clickable. In that case, I've also given you this direct link here to go to Dropbox. Now, so if I click this, it's going to open this window here. Now, what Dropbox is, it's just an online storage website. So all it is, is I've put the images on my Dropbox and you're just downloading them from me. There's no need for you to have a Dropbox account. You don't need to worry about the program or anything. It's just the place that I've stored the images on because you can't give someone something to download without having it being hosted on some website. So this is where my images are hosting. And all this was back on the website is basically like a quick preview of that Dropbox folder. So if it never works, just click here to go straight to the Dropbox. And all you need to do, see at the top right of the page, it says download. You just click that and it'll download the file straight to your page. Now, if it has multiple images in it, it will usually download as what's called a zip folder. So if I come in here and I click the download, this is like the little downloads bar on Google Chrome. So I selected show in folder and it's just popped up here. Now a zip folder. What that is, it's when multiple images are compressed 
into one folder for download. So it makes the file sizes a lot smaller and easier to send. So if you ever see this, sometimes when you buy digital images from a stamp company, it may come in this folder because they're trying to give you, say, five different files at once. And to send them all by email would either require multiple links when not a lot of um, shops allow you to do that online, or they may be really big file sizes because the stamp companies are trying to give you really good quality uh, images. So if you see this, all it means it's zipped up together, so we just need to unzip it to use it. So you right click it and you can see the words extract. You just click extract and I just click OK. And you can see it's just made the open folder. Now it just usually automatically opens like this, but you can see here this is the zipped folder and this is the open folder. There's no zip here on it. I can double click that and it shows me the contents. And then you can always delete this once you've unzipped it because you've got the folder there. Now, if you don't like doing it, it's a little bit confusing for you. When you come to Dropbox, what you can do is actually select each image that you want to download. So you can click on it to open it up. Don't ever download from these little thumbnails. These are just previews. You always have to click it to open it. And again, come up to the top right and you can see the little down arrow here, which is download. So you click direct download. Don't save the preview this is always a preview on dropbox it's going to be lower quality and you can see that's opened up in my downloads little link it may go to your downloads folder as well and then that's the image downloaded to my computer so that's firstly how you download your images now let's show you how to resize them in microsoft word so i've got my word document open here already for us here we are. Now I've got one of the newer versions of Microsoft Word. If you're in one of the older versions, the controls may be slightly different, but it essentially does look very much the same. If you do have trouble, again, feel free to ask, but you can also Google some of the options I'm talking about. So if you can't find, say, the insert button for your version of Word, you can always go to Google and type where is insert button Microsoft Word version 93 or something like that, and it's going to show you exactly where that is. Okay, so resizing stamps, super easy. This is all you need to do. So I've got my page set up here already. You can see this is a full page. I just come right up to the top here where it says insert. So I click that and you can see these are all the things you can insert and do. Then I want to click pictures. So nice and easy to remember because we're inserting a picture into the page. I click this. Now it may default to a specific folder and you may need to find your folder down the side here. I've got mine already open to my download folder for this project. Now select the image you want to do. You can either double click it or just select it and insert and then it will just come straight up on the page. Now you can see that I've easily put the image on the page, but maybe I don't want it so big or maybe I want multiple images on this page. Now, the problem that I see most people have when they work with Microsoft Word is they insert the image, but now they can't do anything with it. You can see here, I'm trying to move it around, but it doesn't actually move on the page. This is because on Word, you have to change the alignment of your objects to be able to move them in and around what would be your bodies of text, because this is a word processing program. So to do that, it's very simple. You just right click come down to where it says wrap text and I just want to change it from in line with text to in front of text. So all I've done is just change the alignment to in front of text and now if I click and I hold my uh, mouse down I can just drag that to wherever I want on my page. On the older versions of Word you may right click and not see wrap text. If you can't you'll find format picture and usually when you click format picture, it brings up a little dialog box that also has that wrap text or alignment option within. So just have a look for either format picture or wrap text. Now, whenever you're doing this as well, you want to make sure the image is selected to be able to get those options. So if I accidentally click somewhere else or I'm doing something and come back to this page, all of a sudden you'll notice my image isn't actually selected. I can select her to move it just by simply clicking on the image. And you'll notice that I get this box around the extent of my image. This is the parameter box and it's showing that my image is selected. Okay, now that we know how to move our image around, let's look at resizing our image. Very simple to do. In this version of Word, you'll notice at the top right that I have the height and width areas under the size box. 
And all you need to do is you can click one of these and you can type in whatever you like. So I want 10 centimeters. Mine's automatically set up to centimeters. So if I type 10, it's going to recognize that as centimeters and just change that automatically for me. Now I do have this set up at the moment that my height and width are adjusting together. This is called constraining your proportions. So if I change one dimension, the other dimension's automatically going to change with it. So I keep all of the sizing and constraints set up here. So if I change this to five, notice it doesn't look any stretched or any flattened. It's keeping that same size of the image there. Now, if you're on the older version of Word, you just right click and you'll see there'll be either size, in position like I've got here or again that format picture dialog box will bring up the same thing this is what it usually looks at like in the older versions you have size here and then it's the same thing you have the height and the width now in the older versions or if you're having trouble keeping that ratio you'll notice here where it says lock aspect ratio this is what's making that height and width change together so if you're finding that your images are looking like squished or stretched when you change them that may not be selected so I'll show you what happens if I deselect that so I'm going to deselect that and change this to say 10 Okay, so see how she's really stretched there? And the reason for that is I didn't have that constrained proportion on. So when I changed one of the dimensions, the other didn't change with it. It stayed at what it was originally. Now, if you make a mistake and you don't know what to do, just press Control, hold, hold it down on your keyboard, and then press Z or Z, and that will undo your latest action. You can also see at the top left here, the little arrow pointing backwards, that's an undo button and the arrow pointing forward is a redo. So redo, I'm all stretched, undo, I bring it back. So that way, if you make a mistake and you go, oh no, I don't know what I've done, control Z or the arrow pointing back at the top of the page. Have a bit of an experiment with that. If you are new to using Word, make some mistakes on purpose and try going back and undoing them just so it becomes familiar for you to do. Now I want to change that back to make sure that I um, can change my images without worrying about those proportions. So remember you can either right click the image and go down to size or at the top here where the size box is you can press a little arrow in the bottom corner and it brings up that same menu. So I'm going to make sure that lock aspect ratio is ticked now and that should make it easy for me to say change and notice here I change the dimension and the whole thing changes together. Now, one other really neat thing about this is that uh, Microsoft Word allows you to play between imperial and metric system with your sizing. So you can see I'm working in centimeters at the moment, but say someone gives me instruction in inches. So I want this to be five inches across. So I'm going to come in here and I can type five. And then I've got my little quotation marks on the keyboard. Sorry, I had to press that twice because my keyboard's a bit funny. But you can see five quotation marks, which is the sign for inches. And then I click enter and it automatically translates that into centimeters. And vice versa as well. So if yours is reading inches now, but say someone has given you centimeters, what you can do is just come in and you can type, say, 8 cm for centimeters and press enter and that's going to automatically adjust that but in your inches ratio so you don't need to go to google and work out what the inches to centimeters measurement is it's just going to automatically do that for you so it's really really easy and that's all you need to do to resize the image so let's just go through that really quickly one more time i click insert at the top of the page and then i click pictures I choose the image I want to picture. You can either double click or select insert. Remember when you first insert an image, you can't move it around on the page. So I right click and I select wrap text and I select in front of text. Now I can move her to wherever I want. If you're using the older version of Word, right click and you want to go to format picture and you'll find the alignment or the text wrapping options. Once you've done this, just come up to size at the top of the page and you can type in any size you like to resize this on your page. And that's how easy it is to resize an image. Now, say you want to set up your page with multiple images. You can just repeat this process by inserting another image at the top of the page. 
Now you'll notice as this comes in, and again, I can't actually move this image around first. So I just need to go through and change that alignment. Now, another way you can resize your images is just by dragging the handle. So you can see as I hover over the edges of this box, my mouse changes to those arrows and I can just bring them in and it will allow me to resize it. So that's a bit more if you don't care about specific dimensions, but this way you can easily add multiple images to your page. Say you want the same image copied down below. We can copy an image easily by first selecting it by clicking on it. And you can either hold down the control button on your keyboard and press C for copy, or you can right click and select copy in the menu bar. Deselect the image by clicking off it. You'll notice that that border has gone away and I can either hold down control and press V to paste or right click and select paste. So I'm just going to paste that in. Now, because my image here already had the formatting options changed, it already changed that alignment. I should be able to freely move this on the page. I'm going to change that into my smaller size and I can just move it next to this image here. So all of a sudden I've got multiple images set up on your page. If you want to see the whole page easily, come up and select view and then you can click one page and that will show you your entire page so you can use it the best for printing. To come back to your picture menu, what you need to do is just double click the image. Double clicking the image brings up this format bar which had all of your resizing and everything in it. So that's how we set up the image on the page. All right, well, I think that's everything here today on how to resize and use our digital stamps. Also, if you do have any requests for different tips or techniques you'd like to see in these little mini coloring FAQ videos, please feel free to get in touch. You can also find more answers to popular questions over on my website at kittenclatter.com and select coloring FAQs in the menu bar. You'll also find our coloring classes under the shop tab and there are freebies there for you to play with as well. Thank you so much for watching and happy coloring.